bow and arrow that you shoot like a rifle. It's popular for both target shooting and hunting. With a rifle, you can shoot from 180 meters away. But using a crossbow is more of a challenge. You have to be at least four times closer to your target. A crossbow consists of the bow and the stock. The bow shoots the arrow while the stock houses the trigger and the aiming scope. A plate of fiberglass is the starting point for the bow's limbs, the two curved arms that pull back and release to shoot the arrow. A vacuum holds the plate steady as a computer-guided grinder does some initial shaping. Workers measure the plate with micrometers to ensure it meets strict specifications. This is a special type of fiberglass. The fibers all run in the same direction, meaning they can bend repeatedly without weakening over time. Workers mount the plate on a computer-guided cutter. It carves out the limbs with a high-pressure water jet, the most precise way to slice fiberglass. Each plate yields four limbs, two bows worth. The severed fibers make their surface rough, so a little polishing is in order. The limbs go into a vibrating tub filled with ceramic stones that rub against the limbs wearing down the coarse fibers. Now the limbs are ready for decoration. The design is printed on plastic film. This machine uses heat and pressure to transfer the design. The next bow component is called the riser. They machine it out of aluminum, then jazz it up with an ink transfer. To assemble the bow, they bolt a limb to each side of the riser. It acts as a spacer, separating the limbs so that the arrow can pass between them when you shoot. The riser and limbs go into a press, which applies more than 300 kilograms of pressure, bending the limbs into an arc. Next, workers mount a set of aluminum pulleys on each limb tip. These are called compound cams. Next, the yoke. A yoke is a string with a loop on each end. They anchor one loop to one side of the limb tip, pass the other end through a loop on a steel cable, then anchor it to the other side. This forms a Y shape that distributes pressure on the limb evenly. They repeat the same process with a second yoke on the other limb. Now for the bowstring. On each limb, they attach the bowstring end to one side of the cam. Then they anchor the cable, coming from the yoke, to the other side. Next, two rubber silencers go onto the bowstring. When you shoot, these silencers absorb the string's vibration, reducing the sound. These components make up what's known as a compound bow. This design enables the bowstring to propel the arrow farther. Now the bow is finished and ready for testing. This scale measures how much strength it takes to draw the bow. Elsewhere, the stock is coming together. First, the trigger mechanism. It undergoes extensive testing in a specially designed device that applies air pressure to simulate the bowstring tension. They pull the trigger six times to ensure it fires properly. Then they apply the safety catch, and with a strap to get maximum strength, they pull some more. This makes absolutely sure the trigger won't fire accidentally in the safety position. After attaching a connecting rod that fits into the bow's riser, they install the trigger in the barrel. Then they bolt these components into the stock housing. They attach a bridge and rail on which the scope will mount. Now they test the trigger again to check the installation. Connecting the crossbow's two sections is simple. You insert the stock's rod into a slot in the riser and tighten a mounting bolt. Then you attach a foot stirrup. To cock the bow, you stand the crossbow on the ground, put your foot in the stirrup, and pull the bowstring upward until it locks into the trigger mechanism. Then you pick up the crossbow, aim, and fire. <laughs>